welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I want to really briefly talk about pricing, how you price yourself uh, in the world of sports photography. Cue the intro. So pricing for sports photography is really, really hard. Um, pricing for photography, for being a creative, for being a videographer, for being whatever, is a really difficult thing. Running your own business, um, being a freelancer, being self-employed, pricing is hard, all right? It, it, it's not an easy thing, and I'm not in this video at any point gonna say, this is the amount that you should be giving um, when you quote for a client. But what I will talk about really, really briefly is how I do it, I'm not going to give you my numbers, but I will tell you how I do it. So mine's based on um, what I feel in in my gut, what I feel is a acceptable amount of money for either a half day or a full day. If I'm working events, if I'm working races, if I'm working netball matches, if I'm working all that kind of stuff, it's done on half day or full day rates. Okay, depending on what it is, because sometimes. You know, a netball game's like 60 minutes or something. Um, it's not very long, so there's no point in me charging a full day for that, unless there's a big amount of trouble. So say it's a home game uh, for netball, that's priced at a half day rate. And the way I price that is really, really simple. So I take into account how much, the starting point for me is I take into account is how much all my bills and all my rent and everything else is for the month. And I know that that figure is a set amount. And then what I do is I figure out, right, how many days do I need to work that month in order to, pay those bills, and that's just the bare minimum. So I then go off of what I think is about right, what I feel is about right for a half day or a full day, okay? And that's that's when I do events. When I'm working on big, really, really big commercial projects, that takes a slightly different twist because those big commercial projects take a lot of planning, there's a lot of prep, there's usually a lot of post editing in the back end, there's usually studio hire, there's equipment hire, there's all sorts of stuff that goes in. And it's really important that for me that I show a client how I break all that down and that doesn't mean that my rate as a photographer out on the on an event on a race on a netball court is any different to what it is in a studio or on location for a shoot but I, what I then do is I then tag in everything else so you've got to be really really careful if you say right my day rate for all photography um, regardless of what it is is 250 pounds a day, I appreciate that's probably quite low. There's probably people on the video now going, I'd love to earn 250 pounds a day from photography. And there's probably people on that on the video, watching this video, sorry, right now thinking, that's nothing. It's a rough, it's just a random figure I've pulled out of my head, okay? So 250 pounds a day, so say that's what you're working on. Well, 250 pounds a day for you to turn up and take photographs of a 10K race is very, very different to you turning up on location where you need studio lights, where you need assistance, where you need models, where you need studio backdrops, all of that stuff is very, very different. The biggest thing I will say about pricing when it comes to sports photography is don't, one is don't sell yourself short. I'll give you two things. Don't sell yourself short. You are more valuable financially than you give yourself credit for. We've talked about like free work and stuff before and like free versus pay and all that kind of stuff. And that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is if you're gonna start charging, Put a value on your time, half day, hourly, full day, whatever it might be, but you're more valuable than you think. Don't be ridiculous about it, right, when you're first starting out, but put a value on that and then work from that value. The other thing I would say is don't leave yourself short. So if you've got a shoot that is 400 miles away, then if you need to stop over in a hotel or you need to uh, travel somewhere, don't leave yourself short. There's no point in, you know, charging a client a hundred quid for a, you know, an hour's photo shoot if it's going to cost you a hundred pound in travel and accommodation because it's that far away from you that you know you need to stop over overnight. So you've got to really think about this stuff. Don't just go, oh well, it's this amount of money and away we go. You need to leave, be a little bit more deeper in your thought process than that. It's a really really hard one. 
I appreciate it's a difficult one uh, for people to wrap their heads around. But the biggest thing is, is look at how much money you need to make a month to cover rent and bills and all those kind of things. Work out then what feels right for you. What in your gut feels like the right figure? Because that figure nine times out of 10 is usually right. Um, and then don't sell yourself short and then don't leave yourself short of money because you're not thinking about all the other things that are, that's going to cost you in order to take those pillows. It's not an easy one. Like I said, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that we all face. If you haven't already, hit subscribe. Uh, I do really appreciate the subscribers. Give me a follow on Instagram as give me a follow on Instagram as well. Um, it's very, very cool to have a little bit of a community going here. It's ace. Have a wicked day, have a great Christmas, have a great new year, and we will see you all again very soon.